This is a 70 inch television. And not too long ago, this was actually considered a really big television. What if we could get a little bit bigger? How about something that would do this entire wall? That would be equivalent to a 180 inch screen. And what if we could do it for under a thousand dollars? And what if we could get that picture out of something that fit in the palm of my hand? Yeah, like this. This is the Dengbe Atom. And believe it or not, this would project up to a 180 inch screen and it's under a thousand dollars. I think we should definitely take a look at this thing. So let's do that. So this is the Dengbe Atom and that's A-T-O-M and that's because of its tiny size, literally fits in the palm of my hand and is by far the smallest projector that I've ever had. Now the reason why it's small is because this uses a laser light source. So instead of using a traditional bulb that you have to replace every few years, this uses a laser light source, which is good for 30,000 hours. Now to put that into perspective, if you were to turn this projector on and watch it for four hours every single day, you know, not miss a day at all, and watch it for four hours every single day, that would last you over 20 years. On the back, there is a power button here. There is an HDMI 2.0 port, and that's because this is a 1080p laser projector. It does have a USB and a 3.5 millimeter jack. Now, there are no other buttons on here, which does make it look nice, but don't lose that remote control, because if you do, well, you might be in trouble. Speaking of that remote control, that remote control is actually a Bluetooth remote control, which is super nice, especially at this price point. That means you can point your remote control wherever you want and it'll work. And what I found interesting is it looks like there's speaker grills on both sides. It's not. There's actually only speakers on the left-hand side. And when you have this in a room, it's okay, it's adequate. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it. But if you were to take this outside and use it, uh, you're going to uh, want something more than this, in my opinion. And in that case, you're gonna to wanna to use the built-in Bluetooth and Bluetooth this to a speaker or some other device or use that 3.5 millimeter jack to be able to use a portable speaker. Now, as far as fan noise goes, this thing is silent. And that's one of the things that I love about laser projectors. In general, they're usually pretty darn quiet. However, you could adjust the brightness. If you turn the brightness all the way up to 10, it does start to get loud on the bottom is the only spot where you can really connect a mount to and it's just one hole the thing that i actually like about this is because this is so small i consider this portable i can bring this to my bedroom i can bring this to my office i can bring this upstairs to my game room i can bring this wherever i want and all i need to hook this up is a camera tripod they're extremely cheap and they're very, very portable, making this really easy to transport and utilize somewhere else. Now, if you're gonna have a portable unit like this, you need to make sure that it's easy to hook up. So obviously I have to figure out exactly how easy it is to use this. So I hooked it up to my tripod and tried to center it as best as I could and kind of guessed how far away from the screen it should be. This is where things get interesting. When I went into the settings, I looked at the things that it had. It had things like, uh, auto obstacle avoidance, uh, auto keystone, auto focus. And then it had this one setting in there called fit to screen. So I wanted to see what this did. So I pushed the button. As you can see, my screen is way outside. And just in a matter of seconds, it zoomed it in, it fit it onto the screen, and it auto keystoned it. It literally came perfectly in center. I was utterly amazed at how awesome <laughs> this worked. And this makes the idea of this being a portable unit, whether that be around your house or bringing it somewhere else, highly attractive. This does use a DLP chip in there. That means that it has the capability of 3D. But as we've seen, a lot of these DLP projectors don't actually do 3D anymore. This one does. Completely unexpected in this price range. Now, if you have not seen 3D on a DLP projector, if you get one of these, get some DLP link glasses, pick up a 3D Blu-ray, you'll be, you'll be happy. It's great, especially like if you get like Avatar or something like that. I tested out the 3D, awesome. Works fantastic, but there was one issue that I ran into. You know how I was so excited about that screen fit? Well, guess what? You can't do any Keystone or anything else if you wanna watch 3D. So for that, you're going to have to really line this up appropriately to the screen. 
or just not care that it's not lined up to your screen correctly. Now I did want to check out the picture settings and so I checked out all the different picture settings and they all looked pretty good. I didn't have any um, necessarily issues with them. None of them were extremely color accurate out of the box except for a movie that was pretty darn color accurate for my screen. The white balance was a little bit off and I am using the Silver Ticket WAB screens for those that are wondering, but it was just having a little bit too much blue in it for my screen. So I did want to go ahead and do some custom calibration. When I calibrated this, I was really shocked at how easy it was to calibrate and get it in. Now I went ahead and calibrated the white balance for my screen as well as the gamma and believe it or not, all of the colors just really came in line. In fact, the Delta errors were all under six, which are some of the best that I've gotten out of a projector in this price range. And what was really impressive is when I was looking at the picture quality of this thing was the vibrancy of this particular projector. Now, a lot of that has to do with the laser. The laser module in general is a lot more vibrant of an image and it usually has better contrast, especially intra-contrast between the different colors. And you could really see this on scenes like this in Prometheus where we're starting to get really good shadow detail. And this was something that uh, I was really surprised at because most projectors in this price range, although you can get decent shadow detail, you'll actually get washed out images on the brighter scenes. That wasn't the case with this projector at all. Now, having said that, this also can accept HDR signals, both HDR10 and HLG. This is where we're starting to see where the price of this projector really comes into play. Although it can play HDR and it looks great on things like nature documentaries and bright, vibrant cartoons and even neutral content, it doesn't look as good on darker content. You start seeing some black crush with that HDR. And I would actually recommend you turning off HDR if you're going to be watching some of these HDR dark movies. All right, now here's the problem with projectors for the longest time. We've had some decent $500 projectors and below. They've had quite a bit of sacrifices, but you've been able to get them. And then you really didn't have much until you hit that $1,500 and above. And those would be your lifestyle projectors, your 4K lifestyle projectors, which are getting surprisingly good. But in between that $500 to $1,500 really hasn't been anything that has been competitive. That's where this comes in. This is in that price range, and I will say they've done a really good job. For those people that want better than the $500 one, is it as good as a lifestyle projector, a 4K? No. I know for myself, I absolutely plan to use this quite often. I will be bringing this to people's houses to play games, maybe hook up the Switch to it, have some fun with it, and watch movies, especially with the built-in Android operating system. I'm really looking forward to doing that. And of course, family movie night. All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Audio. Do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. Your subscription may not mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. And please share the video with your friends. All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Audio and I'm out.